recording. We are live, live right now. From the internet. It is Thursday evening. It's muscle Thursday. science for women. Yes. It's evening it's in Ashley. Canada. It's Ashley. It's Rachel. It's talking about food and working out. Okay. <laughs> I think I just said offline that I was going to answer a question. Do the right things. Don't be stupid. So obviously <laughs> I've got all the answers for you. Um, we're going to dive into um, just, you know, just a nice, easy little Q and a, cause sometimes yeah. these they've piled up a little bit over, um, the holidays. We've got some questions in our inbox. We also got, I think a fair influx of folks, um, buying our muscle science for women program yeah. and our grow your glutes workshop. And I love that. I love to see people already planning for their strength goals for the new year. I have a feeling that's kind of what it was. It was people like maybe, I don't know, maybe they had some holiday money or maybe they were just like planning their new year's resolutions or something, but we got some people signing up for our programs and I love to see it. Uh, and you guys, as you go through, like we sometimes have people, you know, sending us emails, whatever, after they've, mm -hmm. they've signed up and asking questions, that's what we're here for. That's another reason why our programs are better than everybody else's because we, we will personally answer your questions and talk you through yeah. things and support you through your, your, your journey. So, um, that's awesome. That's all I got to say about that. We're awesome. We're yeah. awesome. You're awesome. Let's do this 2024. Okay. Hell yeah. Got some questions. Let's dive into this question. Nope. Not that one. Can you do a little dance or something while I, uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say, I just realized I have this huge bruise on my wrist. You can't really see it. What happened to you? you? I just saw that. And then on my yeah, I, arm, I, can see it. I, can um, see I it. had basketball game last night or two nights ago, and it was pretty intense. It was the playoffs. And yeah, it was, it was a brawl. You are always hurting yourself at sports. Well, these, these chicks are intense. They're like, Apparently. they feel like they think it's the WNBA or something. I'm like, chill out this is wreck basketball like let's let's just be uh you know let's chill not listen crazy i have never been a cheerleader in my younger years but when i come visit i will cheerlead on the sidelines because there's no way please in heck i'm getting involved in any of that aggression okay all right i found the question i found the question all, all right, right let's go Christy's saying, love your podcast. I'm wondering if there are good ways to isolate glutes, hamstrings, quads when working out at a home gym. I have a squat rack, dumbbells, barbells, weights, but no machines. Love this already. Okay. A little history. I spent three to four years doing personal training five days a week at a small gym. Workouts were amazing. Kept my legs looking really strong. Wanted to save some money. So I started working out at home, but I feel like my legs are not getting the same challenging workouts. Um, she's saying, I'm not training as heavy since I'm working out alone. I wonder if I can just increase volume to compensate for lifting less weight. All right. Thoughts. Got it. Um, so absolutely is the answer. You can absolutely isolate what you say, glutes, hamstrings, hamstrings and quads. Hamstrings, quads, yeah. With, and she said she does have a squat rack and a barbell. And dumbbells. And dumbbell. Yeah, yep. 100%. Um, so it's really just like understanding and learning what movements to do to uh specifically target hypertrophy training and the biggest thing with that is realizing that if our goal is specifically hypertrophy training then we want to create as much tension in the muscle tissue as possible and so time under tension all of that um, and so i mean i'm just going to say first off like this is exactly what we teach in the muscle science hormone program we go through legitimately like what is hypertrophy how do you get it what is the most efficient way um and we go through like what particular movements are potentially better than others right um when you have a specific goal so i'll just give you an example um you have a barbell you have uh plates and say that your goal is to grow your glutes and your hamstrings um do you choose to continue to maybe do conventional deadlifts with your barbell or do we switch things up and do some RDLs um, where there's more tension in the glutes and the hamstrings than there would be if you did like a conventional deadlift? Um, there's also tons of different form, some tons of different types of deadlifts. Um, so yeah, that's just an example. 
Um, there's also a lot of ways to get creative, like from the home gym, as you know. Um, and one thing that I'm just thinking about off the top of my head is, um, you know, like the 45 degree hip extension machine thing, um, where you basically are doing a, you're like on a machine and you're doing a, um, a hip extension Thrust, up, yeah. right. It's called a 45 degree hip extension. You can actually, if you have a squat rack and a barbell, you can actually set that up at home and you basically put the bar. I have a video of this and we have this in the program. You put the barbell over the squat rack, put some weights on the side so that it's stable. And then you put like a pad or a towel or something um, along the barbell and you put some dumbbells to anchor your feet, hold a dumbbell or a plate, and you can literally create a 45 degree hip extension machine at home with that. Um, and it's like a great setup. So there's so many different ways to get creative. It's just like knowing what to do. And that's exactly what we show you in the program. So I would also add, I agree. I would also add that it sounds like in her email, she's saying, I don't lift as heavy because I'm alone. Should I just do more volume? Cause I don't want to lift heavy weights. So there's a couple, there's some other like factors going on here. It's like, are you not lifting as much because you're not motivated when someone's not watching you? Are you not lifting as much because you're scared, you know, for like mm -hmm. safety purposes? Um, there are some, there are also some exercise switches you can make where you can still lift heavy, but feel a little bit safer about what you're doing. Um, because I still think that we, within reason and within safety and common sense, trying to lift heavy is good. Right. And that's going to look different for different people. But I, you know, unless you have a really strong health or fear or whatever reason, I don't think we should be trying to find ways around lifting heavy. I think we should try to lift heavy. It's good. Right. Um, so if you can, and that's again, what our, our programs grow your glutes would be great for Christy, I think, um, because that's literally what we're talking about. And we offer so many different exercises, most of which can be done at home, especially with the equipment that she has. Um, but there are adjustments you can make so that maybe you don't have to have as heavy of a weight. Um, and going back to your point about, um, the tension thing, right? So I have been doing, I've talked about this in lots of episodes, I've been really like focusing more on lower body over the last like six months or so when the previous 15 years, I've mostly focused on upper body because I just prefer it. Um, but it's been really fun, you know, working these bigger muscles and trying to see some growth in my lower body. And one of my favorite exercises for glutes and hamstrings is a, just like a single leg step up, but like a glute focus step up and holding on to something in front of you. We have videos of this in the grow your glutes, but it's just about the setup. It's about the setup of your body, the angles of your body, so that you hit maybe more glute focused instead of quads. And it's also about the slowness and intention of the movement. So instead of, you see people do it all the time. You're doing step ups on a box or a bench at the gym and people are just kind of stepping up and stepping down, stepping up and stepping down. And what I've been doing is I've got this, this glute focus with my body mechanics and the, is it concentric? I always get it mixed up. The lowering, I'm going as slow as I possibly can slow as I possibly can. I've got no, I'm not adding any weight. It's just my body and my glutes every time fired up. Those babies are juicy at the end of that. I feel it the next day. And it's just about slow, intentional contraction of my glutes with this range of motion. It's beautiful. You don't need any weight and it, there's no safety issues, right? You're holding on to something. So, you know, there's just tons of ways that you can do this. Um, you know, I, and I think she also maybe just has to like think a little bit more about what are the reasons why the home workouts maybe aren't challenging is because it's not as fun and not as motivating. And maybe you do want to start switching up and going back to the gym. You don't need a trainer, but go back where there's other people and there's other machines and there's other things. And it's more interesting and fun. Maybe that would spice it up and, and help a little bit. If that's not in, you know, the future, get our program instead. And <laughs> we've got lots of options for you, but yeah. Sorry. I muted myself because Lilo was yep. barking. Um, yep. I was going to say, that's another thing too. It's like, are you not motivated because you're actually not following a program that you are trying to get better at every single week? That's a huge thing. I put, I was in that position myself, you know, when I stopped doing CrossFit, um, I was like making up workouts, like looking at stuff on Instagram, piecing things together. And it was not fun because I didn't have anything to challenge myself against. Like I wasn't you know, and this is something too, coming from either going to a gym or, you know, group training, things like that. 
a lot of people are like, I want to like, they, they want to get away from it. And then they, they try to do it on their own. They're like, this is boring. I'm not having fun. And it's typically because they start doing random stuff and they're not like, they don't have any progression or any structure behind it. But when you start to get that structure, especially like with the muscle science forum program, the three months, you know, the different phases, you are competing against yourself. And it's you, you find this whole new realm of possibilities and like, just it, it gets fun. It gets more fun. It gets mm -hmm. challenging. It gets exciting because you're literally trying to beat yourself each week in terms of mm -hmm. your progressions. Um, so that's another thing. Definitely, you know, look into actually joining a program. And I would say too, like, you know, yeah, you can find programs online for free and you can go to Instagram and find all these people's workouts, stuff like that. But there is something behind like a focused program that you're actually putting your money behind too, because you're actually going to pay attention to that a lot more. You know, we just like anything else, we pay attention to what we pay for. I know that's true for me mm -hmm. um, versus something that we're given for free or we find for free. It's it's a whole different um, aspect to it. So um, it's another form of accountability. So yeah, but I agree. If you, if you are trying to save money, our program is still way cheaper than hiring oh, yeah. trainers. So there is that. Um, cool. 100%. All right. Next question. Wait. Jessica says, Hey girls. Hey, I was listening to your most recent podcast. And that how she question. said it. She said, Hey girls. I'm, I'm assuming she said it in kind of a flirty way. I'm just going to go with that. Um, she said, I thought of a question that may not have been talked about a lot yet. So love this intro. I've learned a lot from both of you and have been doing really well at maintenance. Good job. Just Jess. That's, you know, not easy to do. But now I'm looking to prep for the next pregnancy. That's exciting. My question for you is what would your recommendation be for pregnancy prep in terms of eating exercise? Also, thoughts on taking protein powder during pregnancy. Thank you in advance. Mm -hmm. Love listening to you guys. Thank you, Jess. That was very nice of you. Um, <clears throat> love talking about pregnancy stuff. And first, before we say anything, I just, you got to do this, right? Caveat, disclaimer we're not doctors, we're not your doctor, we don't know anything about you take this with a grain of salt. This is not medical advice. You got to be extra careful with the pregnancy stuff. No, right? hundred percent, you know? Yeah. Um, with that said, there are some, I think, common sense things that I feel pretty comfortable saying, and I'm sure you do too. You work with a lot of women, um, and having been pregnant and having gone through all this stuff, you know, I, I can tell you what worked for me and what I felt very comfortable doing. Um, protein powder, I think is perfectly fine. There is no reason. I think you need to be concerned about any protein powder. If, especially if you already are using it regularly and you have a type that you digest well, um, we, we can find sometimes when you get pregnant that certain things you used to love and do really well with, you suddenly don't for a while. So if you suddenly are making a protein shake and it's disgusting to you, that's fine. And that's okay too. It's nothing necessarily bad. It's just, our bodies are going through a lot of weird stuff. Um, but with that said, if you normally use a good high quality whey protein, keep doing it great. Um, because you want to get your protein in, and sometimes you need to do it with a shake. So again, mm -hmm. disclaimer, but I would say, I mean, I, I crush protein shakes the whole time. So there's that. Um, <clears throat> prepping for pregnancy again, we don't really know where you're at right now, what you're doing, you know, whatever. Um, but I have said, and if you want to go back actually, because I, I have talked about, cause this, this podcast was rebranded. It used to be just me. And when it was muscle Maven radio, I did do a couple mm -hmm. pregnancy related episodes. So if you want to go back and search, you can find a very long one with me getting very TMI about <laughs> my whole journey and the pregnancy and the birth and the recovery and nutrition and all of that. So if you want to go listen to that, I'll put it in the show notes too. Um, but I would say like the kind of high level notes is do what you would do to optimize your own health, because that is going to put you in the best position to be able to get pregnant and have a baby and carry that baby well and all of that stuff. So I'd say the biggest difference is if when you're not thinking about pregnancy, you may be focused on like looking really good and performing really well. Whereas maybe the, the slight adjustment shift is focusing instead on nourishing yourself as well as you possibly can. Um, because one of the big things is at the beginning, you know, when you're getting pregnant and early stages of pregnancy, there's a ton of nutritional requirements and your body just leeches every vitamin and mineral and nutrient you're taking in and putting it 
preferentially towards your growing baby. So you want to be like just stocked up with nutrients. So eat really, really well. And if you want to take a, a prenatal vitamin or you want to just kind of whatever makes you feel like you're getting the most nutritious diet as possible, I would say definitely do that. And then I would say manage stress. So you don't want to be working out like a crazy person. You don't want to be over chronic cardio, over exercising, under sleeping, all of those things. Like just, you want to think about creating an environment where your body feels really safe and ready to just get pregnant and do the incredible hard work that that requires. So that's what I would say. If you're somebody who loves to crush and work out an hour a day, like maybe we think about starting to taper that back a little bit, chill just a little bit. And if you're somebody who likes to be really lean and eat really strictly, maybe you want to think about just not even, I'm not even saying like, don't eat the way, just folk, just switch the focus from what you want to what your body would want if you're going to be getting pregnant. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, is there yeah. anything you can 100%. think of to add to that? No, I mean, I think this is your, your realm. Uh, I mean, I'm not a pro I've done yeah. it once, but I do feel, you know, I think I feel really strongly about it. And it's an area that I have really done a ton of work and research about because whether you ever want to have kids or not, you know, women's bodies, um, are, are primed and created and designed to do a really hardcore, crazy thing. And we, the medical system, the medical, um, medicalization of sort of birth and being pregnant and all that stuff and mainstream health information turns that process into something really scary and weird and full of misinformation the same way that happens with a lot of things surrounding health mm -hmm. and fitness. And, um, there's a lot of unlearning that we need to do. And so I think that again, just focusing on being nourished and your body feeling safe, because that's the other, that's the thing. It's like, our, our cycles exist to give us feedback, right? And when our cycles are off or we're missing periods or that kind of mm -hmm. stuff is happening, it's because your body's saying like, there's so much stuff going on. I'm not trying to have a baby right now. You want yeah. it to be the opposite. You want your body to be like, yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. So that's that. That's kind of general vague information. But like I said, if you want to go back and just kind of search the podcast and search like pregnancy, there will be a couple episodes that come up with more information. And I've had some other people on talking about it. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. Thanks cool. for Crushed listening. It. Also, okay. I want to say uh, one thing, because I mm -hmm. thought this was really funny in one of the emails that we got. And, yes. you know, for everybody listening again, if you have any questions or this was an email uh, from someone who just purchased the Glory, Grow Your Glutes program, um, but she started off the email and she said, what did she say? Hold on. It's right here. She said, hi, Ashley and Rachel. First off, thank you for existing. You. I'm so happy we exist. I was, too. Like, I was like, yeah, that is a great way to start an email. Like I, we have no like, choice. I'm gonna, yeah. I might just start all my emails like that. That is nice. That's very nice. She was like, she was like, I'm getting into a health coaching journey. And I came across your podcast a few weeks ago and have started binge listening. She said, I love your knowledge and I love your don't do stupid shit personalities. Yeah. I love that. Such a great Thank you. Intro email. Thank you for existing is a very nice thing to say to somebody. Yeah. I'm like, um, that is probably one of the best ways to ever start any yeah. type of conversation. Yeah, Thank you for I existing. I like that. That's good 2024 energy, I think, for us. Yeah. Um, this question might be better directed to you. Amy's asking, or we'll have to put this in the show notes, but she's talking about we discussed ver discussed versagrips. Oh, if you would summarize okay. what you you talked about them. I don't know if we is this one of our many. What's a Versa grip? The Versa grips are, they're just the grips, like the straps, wrist straps, but it's the specific kind. On your, and it's like on your, is it like supposed to kind of help you not? You, um, hold on. Yeah, she's going to go get them. Everybody, if you're not watching on YouTube, this is what you're missing. Like I can see her entire room. Maybe I can look on her bookshelf and see if there's anything weird on there. She's going to get her Versa no, grips. No, no. Oh, here comes Lilo. No, I think Lilo's not. wearing like a shirt of some I'm kind. I'm watching Bree's dog. And so here now we have all the dogs. Now they're here fighting. now. Here now we have all the dogs. Okay. Dogs out. out. Uh, 
quality programming, everybody. Okay, yeah, let me see these bad boys. Okay, so Versa grips are these things. Are these just like easier um, straps? I like them better because yeah. they feel a little bit more secure um, in terms of they don't hurt my wrists as much when, uh, mm. compared to just like wrist straps. So yeah. they're Versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just the company. You can get these on Amazon. Um, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's also like knockoff brands, but you put it around like this. Yep. Velcro in, and then you put this thing under the bar yeah. or the dumbbell, and then you grab it like that. That and seems so it, much easier. Yeah. So I like this a lot because it is, it's a lot easier than like the straps. Um, but again, it has a lot of padding in the wrist area. So it's way more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so. I might get, I might get a set of those because I have straps, which as you know, we've had many conversations. Yeah. I use them very infrequently. I prefer no straps. Um, but also one of the reasons, not only just because again, whatever my opinion, my personal take, I prefer to just lift weights, raw dog in it, but also, it's like your non-dominant hand. It's so hard to get the stupid strap around because you got to like strap yeah. it around like four times. That's why these are non-dominant cool. hands all jacked up. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay. we'll put the link. Um, I have a link that I send oh, everybody um, from for Amazon. I'll put that in the show notes, or we'll okay. put that in the show notes. Um, but cool. yeah, it's and they have different sizes too. I think I got just like the small or the medium. Um, and they have different colors if you like that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And also they've like, so they do have knockoff brands. I will say this. So there are knockoff brands, but again, you get what you pay for when it comes to anything. Um, Versa grips are like, I believe a pair of these are maybe like 60 bucks, 60 or 70 bucks, which seems expensive. I've had these for three plus years and they, there's no, like maybe they look a little wear and tear, but like they're still completely intact. So again, like if you're going to get them, get the good ones, invest in it so that you don't have to go get another pair in a month. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, completely agree. Okay. Um, hold on. I just want to see, there's a couple questions here that I think we should save for a longer time when we have more time. Um, there's a question here. Someone asked about the walking mat. Remember I said I was going to get this, um, like the oh, walking, yeah. the little like treadmill. I did actually get it. It's right over oh. there. Um, we set it up. I literally have not even used it yet. Um, but she's asking, Mandy is asking, um, uh, could you do an episode or, you know, we could talk about it later about which ones you got. Do you recommend it? She says, I always feel uncertain about large purchases like this. Cause I worry about maintenance lifespan, whether I'll actually use it, whatever. Um, and that I can appreciate that. Like you were just talking about, even with the Versa grip, like 60 bucks is not nothing for something that you're yeah. like, am I going to like this? Am I going to use it? But it's also, I, I think it's helpful sometimes with these purchases to think about like cost per use. Um, because mm -hmm. you know, there's like all kinds of conversations about whether it's clothes or anything else. It's like fast fashion versus spending a ton of money. Some people don't have the ability to drop $250 on a shirt, even if it will last for the rest of their life. But I think it is when we can budget around things, it's always worth thinking about the investment. If this costs $300, but it lasts for 10 years and I use it every day, that's a really yeah. good cost per use sort of ratio. Right? So what I got this little walking mat, because again, I feel, I hate, I hate that I have to say this, but ever since I like moved out to the beautiful picturesque ocean side, I'm walking less because again, it gets dark at five o'clock in the winter. Yeah. I'm not walking around where all the bobcats and the ice are by <laughs> myself at night. Um, I'm doing a lot less walking since I've left the city. So I want to just have a bit more ambient, relaxing movement during the day. And I can just stand up and use this walking mat, but I don't know if it's any good. So I will use it over the next uh, couple of weeks and then we'll kind of revisit and I'll give you guys a bit of a lowdown on. Did you get on Amazon? Yep. Yep. And of course yeah. we did the, you know, which one has the best reviews, but the, the yeah. thing, and the thing about reviews, we all know they can be helpful, but people tend to be more likely to leave negative reviews than positive ones, yeah. right? So if you look at anything long enough, if you're reviewing a restaurant or a resort or a piece of equipment or whatever, you're going to find people who are like, everything about this is horrible and I hate it and they should yeah. just burn in hell because people are just more likely, most people who are happy with something don't 
don't, that's the unfortunate nature, human nature. We just like are more yeah. likely to complain about something than we are to say something nice. So reviews are fine, mm -hmm. but take them with a grain of salt anyway. But we did do our research. I feel pretty confident about this one. I'll let you know how it goes and we will report back. So um, Mandy, just stay tuned for that. Okay. Oh, I did get a question on Instagram today about um, meal prepping. Someone just wants to know generally how much we meal prep, um, how much time maybe you dedicate to it in a week, what kind of stuff you meal prep. And I thought you might want to start with that. Yeah. So I'll say that I definitely meal prep way less than I used to. Like I would say like the last two years, I probably like I went from being the person who was like Sunday, I'm going to you know, take one to two hours to prep everything for the week, like meat, veggies, potatoes, whatever. Mm -hmm. And now at least even the last two years, two to three years, maybe I do like very minimal prep. Um, because one, I have an air fryer, <laughs> um, yeah. which takes like, it just, it's so easy to use. Um, two, I've just learned, the different foods that are really easy to make in like 10, 15 minutes that I really enjoy. Um, so yeah, I went from being that person who took like one to two hours on Sunday meal prep. And now I don't do any meal prep besides just going grocery shopping and mm -hmm. knowing what I'm going to have for the week typically. Um, but I will say like, I have the advantage. I work from home, you know, it's, it's different if you're like going into work like if I'm going into work then I would probably still be in that camp of like meal prepping lunches for sure um and yeah so I guess like right now I typically try to just think about like when I'm thinking about my food for the week it's less about the recipes and more about like okay what are the just like single ingredient things so what's my protein what's my vegetable, what's my starch if I'm having one, uh, where's my fat source, and then piece together a balanced meal with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure people follow me. If you follow me on Instagram, like uh, I'll post every now and then and everything looks the same. It's like my breakfast is pretty much the same. Yogurt, cottage cheese, berries, frozen berries, some nuts and seeds. Um, and then with lunch and dinner, it's like a protein source, whether that's, uh, you know, maybe I prep some chicken for a few days in the, in the Instapot, or typically I'll have like a, a frozen piece of fish that I just defrost overnight in the fridge. So like salmon or tuna steaks, which I get at either butcher box or whole foods, throw that in the air fryer for 10 minutes, comes out perfectly. Every time you can do like a million different types of seasoning. So you never get bored. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I do utilize like frozen veggies and fresh veggies, um, depending on what I'm, what I want. That's another, like throw it in the pan for 10 minutes, add whatever seasoning. And it's like, it really is not that hard. And you can make literally 10 to 15 minute meals and it'd be delicious. Um, mm -hmm. so that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to kind of figure out like, are you somebody who gets bored really easily? Are you somebody with minimal time? Like you and I are both very fortunate that we are home enough that we don't have to like prep things four or five days in advance or else we don't get to eat healthy food. Like we can just kind of mm -hmm. like throw things together. But this also does come from years and years and years yeah. of understanding what foods work for us, what foods we need to kind of get, accomplish our goals. And then you and I, I think both to, a, to a differing extents are fine with kind of being very repetitive with our food. And to your point, yes, you can change spices. Yes, you can switch from purple sweet potato to regular sweet potato to squash to this kind of squash, all that stuff. But still, you're eating a plate piece of protein. You probably put in the oven or the air fryer or fried on mm -hmm. a skillet. You're eating a side of either rice or squash or potato. And then you put some like fat and some greens and some vegetables on the side or whatever. It's it's yeah. I think I think some people again, we still get caught up in like it has to be this exciting, beautiful experience every time when that's nice sometimes. And as frequently as you have the energy to expend on it, but most of the time food should just mm -hmm. be, um, nutritious and not a crazy hassle. Um, we're kind of prepping sort of maybe like three, two to three days worth of food. So we'll do enough rice or sweet potato or potato yeah. or whatever the starch is that will last us a couple meals for a couple days in a row. 
and the meat, the protein we usually do the day of, because I don't know, we just do. Yeah. And then, um, same with like vegetables. Again, Alex eats the most vegetables in our family followed maybe by me, Magnus, not Magnus eats like the, uh, like the perfect carnivore diet. Truly. He eats <laughs> meat and fruit. And of course he'll eat like cookies or bread or whatever, if we put in front of him, which we try not to, but he drinks milk, he eats meat and he crushes fruit. That's basically his food. Love and it. I'm perfectly fine with it. We are constantly saying, try this vegetable, try this vegetable, we keep putting it in front of him. And he keeps saying, no. And we're like, okay, we'll just keep trying. But in the meantime, he loves oysters and sardines and oranges and bananas mm. and cod liver. I'm like, I can't get mad at this diet. Like you're fine and you're growing. It's I'm not worried about it. Um, yeah. and the other day we, one of the cool things, one, one prep thing that we're going to change this year is we're buying finally a, um, like a deep freeze, like a secondary freezer. <laughs> And we're going to, oh man, I'm so excited. We're going to, um, there's a farm a little ways away that we're going to go check out and buy, maybe not do like the half a cow, but we're going to go and be like, okay, you've got lamb, you've got cow, you've got chicken, like yeah. give us a lot of it. And we're going to go fill oh, yeah. our deep freeze. Um, we also have friends who hunt around here and they just, somebody just dropped off. They, they caught, they killed two bucks, which is quite rare. So a male deer. And they gave mm -hmm. us the hearts, two I saw fresh that hearts story. That's cool. and a bunch of steaks. And we made some, some deer steak the other day and it is so delicious. It is so much better than beef. It's just mm. so much better. Like I was just sucking the marrow out of these bones. I was eating all the fat. You can just tell that it's fresh. It's not too gamey. It tastes like something different, but it's so good. And then we made bone broth out of it. And I cooked the rice in the bone broth. I'm feeling like a homesteader over here. I'm just <laughs> feeling so good about myself, but it's, you know, it's delicious. So anyway, that. we're really going to try to like improve the, the meat situation because mm -hmm. things are, it's expensive. It's expensive to eat yeah. well. It's expensive to buy in bulk. Um, these things are not easy for anybody these days. So you just got to try to find, you know, um, the ways yeah. that work for you. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely past the days of prepping the whole week and pre-portioning yeah. out the meals and stuff. I'm just trying to make it as easy and delicious as possible. And once you get into the yeah. routine of the things you like, like your breakfast, for example, that takes you two seconds to make. Yeah. Like every morning we have eggs and oatmeal and maybe some avocado and stuff. It takes two seconds to make. You just yeah. fry them up and you eat them, right? So yeah. once you kind of get into and the habit- yeah. yeah. And I was just going to say too, like, like you said, the starches, it's like so easy to prep. Like I do sweet, I do sweet potatoes and squash. And I have that, like you said, for like three or four days, those are things that stay really well in the fridge. And like, you'll mm -hmm. start to see these things. Like you're supposed to be like, Oh yeah. Like these last a long time. So I don't have to worry about them. I cook them once or twice a week, whatever. And then yeah. like, you know, I used to pre-prep my protein, but now I'm like, it's just so it takes five extra minutes to do it fresh and it just tastes better. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like it's just kind of knowing that. And then it's also just being prepared. I think a huge piece of the meal prep is just like, finding ways to get the food in the easiest way possible, because I think that is a huge hurdle that a lot of people, um, you know, just even making time to go to the grocery store, you know, you don't have to, right. There's so many ways, there's so many meal, uh, in grocery store delivery systems now that you can, mm -hmm. you can make your life so easy. If you do like Amazon fresh, you just literally sit on your couch and be like, da, 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 deliver. That's one thing you can do like, you know, what you're doing is get a deep freeze mm -hmm. and get all the protein. Cause the protein is, I think the biggest, the hardest thing to come by, especially, mm -hmm. um, like budget friendly. So mm -hmm. doing it in bulk, getting a deep freeze, which I wish I, I live in an apartment, so I can't do that. Um, mm -hmm. but I do butcher box. Right. So I get that. And it's like, so once you get into routine of that, at least having the stuff in the freezer and then that is like, I think that's the biggest hurdle. Cause once you mm -hmm. get there, right. Once you're like, okay, I've found a way to, even if you live in an apartment, I know how to now like, okay, I need to get a butcher box every so often so that I don't overhaul my freezer, but I still have enough. And then in terms of veggies and fruits and like that type of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, but once you do it, once you kind of put in the effort and the work for a little bit and get into the groove, like it just like anything else to be just becomes part of your life, mm -hmm. um, and second nature. So yeah. 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 I'd say like having the right doing the work of getting the good ingredients at your house is the bigger battle, even more than the food prepping. Cause when it's there and when there isn't anything else there, it's like, okay, I have steaks and chicken thighs in the freezer and I have some sweet potatoes and I don't have any other garbage in the house. So guess what? 
this is what I have super easy. And like the one, one of the good things about social media is Instagram and TikTok have no shortage of recipe ideas. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, you, yeah, you can literally like, look at our like, air fryer, whatever. Yeah. 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 And look at our pages. Cause I, I have a lot of highlights on my Instagram and some of them, like you'll see that they're labeled different thing. Like one of them is easy meals. One of them's like 10 minute meals. Um, and they're just meals that I've made in the past. And I'm like, Oh, this would be, this is a good resource. So I post them there. So if you go to our mm-hmm. Instagrams and then we also like on our websites, both of us, we recipes. have like, I have recipes, um, that are just like, I, some of them I don't even consider recipes, but I put them up there as a mm-hmm. quote recipe because it's an idea for like meal prep too, for those people yeah. who do want to prep ahead. Um, mm-hmm. And because I, I do some meal prep for Alex, um, mm-hmm. you know, throughout mm-hmm. the week. So I do have some of those um, up there and I know you do too. So yeah. rgfit.com and then your website Just is my name, ashleyvanhouten.com. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of my recipes tend to skew either desserts or organ meats, my two favorite <laughs> things, but, uh, there's plenty there for you. Um, all right, well, let's wrap this up. Let's, uh, let's yeah. get on with our day, but, um, I'm hungry. I need to go eat some lunch always, always. And I need to go eat dinner. <laughs> Cause that's the time that it is here. All right, guys, thank you for listening as always send your comments, feedback, positive criticism. If you have any, you probably don't because we're perfect at this, but if you do send it to muscle science for women, number four at gmail.com. We read them. We answer them here as you see and, uh, share the podcast with somebody you think could benefit, maybe rate review, subscribe, download, do all those things. Yeah. That tell the world that we're doing a good job so that we can keep doing a good job for you. (laughs) And, uh, all right. Go, yeah. go have a, have a good time. We'll see you later. <laughs> go have a good time. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Say bye.